official Android 13 is here and it's earlier than any previous Android release by Google. This update is not about the kind of UI overhaul we experienced with Android 12 last year. It's mostly inclined towards the stability and performance. I'll tell you all about new features and changes done in Android 13. Everything that matters to you, including system performance, battery performance, and screen on time. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel as right away I'm announcing two new videos, Android 12 versus Android 13 battery performance and system performance, and battery saving tips on Android 12 and 13. If you don't want to miss future updates, press the bell icon. So without wasting any more time, let's get into action. Let's quickly look at the installation and the size of the update is 855 MB. It says here, hello Android 13. If by any chance you are on Android 13 beta and you don't want to install the latest update, you need to opt out of the Android beta program and then you'll receive the Android 12 update. So let's get into core of this video. Here are 10 relevant and useful features of Android 13. Number one, we have new back animation. It's called as predictive back animation. You can just go to your developer option and switch it on. So this will only work if your app supports it. As of now, I don't see any app supporting it except for Google Meet, which was Google Duo earlier. So when you use your back gesture inside any app, it will predict from where it was opened and it will show you like it will take you to the app menu here, as we can see. And if you'll open the app from your home screen, it will show you the home screen. Next, we have another very useful feature where we can now select language per app. You can just set the language of your choice for any of the installed apps and it will display the text for that app in the selected language. It's all in Spanish now and I don't understand anything. I need to change that back to English else I'll not be able to set my tomorrow's alarm. You can now also add profile pictures for multiple users. You can choose from the default options here or you can also choose from your photo gallery. This is how it looks and it is easier to identify which profile you want to choose when you have multiple profiles. Next is related to privacy settings. As now, whenever you copy the text, you'll get a small pop-up in the bottom left corner as a preview for what you have copied. You can also edit your text by getting into that preview screen and share later. The same applies if you copy any image. You will see the preview of the image you've copied and later you can also edit or share your image. Again, on the same note, notifications are sometimes frustrating as you don't regularly use all the apps you have installed. Now, every app will ask for your permission for notifications and just after the installation, you can decide whether you want the notification or not. Earlier, you never had that option. And by default, your app notifications were always allowed. And the way I see things, you are desperately waiting for this. We have now kind of Material U 2.0 in Android 13. Now you'll find several additional colors extracted from your wallpaper, the ones you have never seen before. This shade of gray is new. And now we have 16 different options to choose from in wallpaper colors. It totally depends on your wallpaper, but in the basic colors, you always have 16 different options to choose from. And this is next level stuff. Not just that, we can now see more third party apps adapting to Material U theming and soon will be followed by the remaining apps. I'm excited about how Material U will evolve with future Android updates, like by Android 15 or 16, all the apps will be supporting the Material U theming. I wish someone from Google is taking notes. Next, we have a new media player tile for your music or media apps. The thumbnail in the background covers the whole tile and the icon adapts to material you theming. The progress bar has amazing squiggle animation here. This was not a wow update, but then I compared it with Android 12's media player tile and I realized that it was boring. And this new one is fun. If you click here, we have a new pop-up listing all the devices or accessories connected to your phone and you can easily choose where you want to play. We saw this animation in last year's Google I.O. and it looks like Google was saving it for Android 13. There are some more cosmetic and UI related changes, like settings and power button icons have moved towards the right corner. Earlier, these icons were present in the center and this change hasn't gone well for me as it is so close to each other that you touch the wrong icon or blank space. This was actually required to accommodate a new option to see your active apps. It shows the number of active apps or the apps running in the background. And also you can easily stop these apps just by touching the stop button from the list of active apps. This feature reminds me of task manager in Microsoft Windows. 
and it's pretty useful in some scenarios like when you have a low battery and you wanted to stop some apps and save some battery. Next, when you have multiple notifications in the panel, the extra notification icons are clubbed in a separate section. And as you swipe up, the notification panel expands and it swiftly reveals all the hidden notifications. We have a similar change on the lock screen as all the extra notifications are clubbed together in a pill-shaped icon. We also have a new quick tile for QR code and it's really helpful. You can use it for different types of QR codes and barcodes. A couple of changes in display settings. In the lock screen setting, there is a new option control from lock device. By enabling this, you can control external devices without unlocking your phone. Display size and text settings are more organized now and the screen is completely revamped. The screensaver settings screen is completely changed and we have bigger tiles as the options. It looks odd to me, but I can see the ease of use here. The accessibility settings screen is more organized now and these settings are now categorized with heading for every section. I can see a new option here as color and motion and all the colors and theme related settings are part of this. In magnification settings, I see a new option of follow typing and you can follow the text you are typing in magnified mode. There is a new change in battery usage. We can see hourly battery usage and also select here for any period you want. If you'll press and hold, it will automatically select all the bars. This is useful as you can identify around what time your battery drains during the day. You can also check which app is eating all the battery and accordingly stop it. Now let's talk about the performance on your phone after Android 13. As I mentioned earlier, Android 13 is inclined towards stability and performance. I'm not exaggerating. Performance is seamless and Pixel 4a has never been like this before. Animations are subtle and there's no jittering or lag. Android 13 is adding the most crucial pieces that were missing in Android 12. And there's a huge list of bugs that are resolved as part of this update. If you own Pixel 6, 6a and 6 Pro, you should immediately install Android 13 as it will bring back these phones to life. But for Pixel 4a, there's a catch and I'll come to that in a bit. In a nutshell, Android 13 is Android 12 plus optimization plus seamlessness plus best user experience minus all the bugs. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the battery performance after Android 13. Android 13 has done major improvements and resolved lots of bugs that were impacting the battery performance of phones like Pixel 6, 6 Pro and 6a. These phones will surely see a boost in battery performance. They have a bigger battery and therefore they can easily handle Android 13. On the other hand, these improvements apply to Pixel 4a, but due to a smaller battery size, it will impact the battery performance and the screen on time for sure. On Android 13 Beta 4, I was getting around four hours of screen on time, and I hope this will improve after Android 13 update. But you can compromise with this if you are using Pixel 4a as your secondary device. If you are already on Android 12 and struggling with it, I'll recommend you to update your phone with Android 13, and you will feel the difference. And if by any chance you are on Android 11 or 10, you should not even think about it because Pixel 4a was giving screen on time of six to seven hours, which is way more than Android 12 and Android 13. You'll always have the option to update to latest Android 13 whenever you want to switch your phone or buy a new phone. You can keep it as a secondary phone or just use Android 13 and get rid of your phone. In a week, I'll get back to you with the final results on Android 13 battery performance. So subscribe to the channel to get the future updates. My name is Sushant and see you in the next video.